Hey, it's Jeremiah Johnson. I want to invite you to a free webinar call on October 13th at 9 p.m. Eastern concerning the subject of spiritual warfare in the last days. You know, as I'm traveling around the nation on the weekends, I'm raising up end time messengers. Every Tuesday night here at the Altar School of Ministry, I'm constantly encountering individuals who are just going through it, marital conflict, children being exposed to pornography and the occult, even churches openly celebrating Halloween, embracing wickedness. I wanna invite you to join me virtually on October 13th at 9 p.m. Eastern for a time of prophetic insight, of prayer. I'm gonna be dismantling the strategies of the enemy and giving you tools on how you can overcome. Go ahead and register now, and I'd love for you to join me. seated. It's a privilege, it's an honor to be here tonight. I want to thank Bishop Younger and the family here at the Ramp Church International. 
I've fasted, I've prayed, I've sought the Lord for what He would want to impart to us tonight. I really feel the Spirit of God is here to pull at the root. How many of you know before Jesus comes for His church, He's going to come to His church? I said before Jesus comes back for His church, He's going to come to her. Jesus began his ministry by cleansing the temple. And he concludes his ministry by cleansing the temple. There's a reason why he did it twice. And there's a reason why all of us throughout our entire lives need to embrace the cleansing that comes from Jesus. As I have traveled around this nation over the last 15 years, most years ministering in 40 to 50 churches and conferences, my heart has grown burdened over the years by the love of the supernatural and the distaste for holiness. I have marveled in the circles that I've traveled in, the admiration for miracles and prophecy and the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. But the moment you mention repentance from sin, the moment you mention pornography and sexual immorality, it gets very quiet. I just want to remind us there are living creatures and there are elders and there are seraphim that are circling the throne even tonight, and they're not saying grace, grace, grace. They're not even saying miracles, miracles, miracles. They're saying holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And if we're really going to believe the prayer that Jesus taught us on earth as it is in heaven, we know that there's no sickness, there's no disease in heaven. And we should contend to pull down that reality here on earth and walk in it. At the same time, we also know that there is holiness, there is purity, there is consecration. The seraphim literally meaning burning ones. That God wants to release that reality here on the earth. So I do bring a, a prophetic burden to you that's global that's from around our, the charismatic Pentecostal circles. I see a love for miracles, for prophecy, for the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. But when it comes to consecration, I don't see a love. And so when Pastor Younger, Bishop Younger, reached out and said, would you come to our holy consecration? I just started crying in my room, just saying, thank you, Lord, that there is still a remnant in America. who understand that the lack of demonstration of the power of God in the church is directly connected to the lack of consecration. There is a greater realm of the demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit that God desires to pour out, but He's dealing with mixture. He's dealing with compromise. He's dealing with the little foxes that spoil the vineyard. What a week that we have in front of us. Amen. If you'll turn in your Bibles or on your iPhones, whatever you're using, to 1 Kings chapter 16. 1 Kings chapter 16. I want to deal with the spirit of perversion tonight. I know that many of you don't really know me, that's okay. I'm, I'm just a, a pretty straightforward guy. My mom had a dream when I was in her womb to name me Jeremiah, that the Lord would raise me up as a prophetic voice, that Satan would try to kill me on many occasions. So I was born dead, the cord was wrapped around my neck. Uh, my mom almost died. We were a miraculous intervention in Miami, Florida. God swept down and saved us. And then all throughout my life, even in Brazil, it was one of the times that Satan tried to take my life. Interesting that you have a campus there. But it's, it's something when you know that you're God's. 
Something when you recognize that your life is not your own and it is a joy and it is a privilege to lay it all down before him. But this 1 Kings 16, we're going to look at Ahab and Jezebel. We're going to look at a showdown that they have uh, with Elijah. But I just want to throw this out there for us just to try to build a bridge from where I'm coming from. In Ezekiel chapter uh, 44, verse 23, Ezekiel the prophet begins to define one of the primary roles of the priests and the leaders in the house of God. Ezekiel says that one of the primary roles of leaders and the priests is they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and the profane. And they should cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. And so one of the things that God is coming to cleanse in His church is the priesthood. You see that God raises up Samuel, a prophet, and the very first thing that he does is he restores the priesthood before prophetic ministry. And he begins to deal with Eli, the high priest, who does not want to confront wickedness and sin in the house of God. I fear that we have a modern day Eli problem in the church, which is giving breed to a generation of Hophnes and Phineases who are living with one foot in the world and one foot in the church, who are speaking in tongues and still cursing their spouse who are trying to lay hands on the sick, but they can't keep their hands off their boyfriend or girlfriend, who are raising their hands in church on Sunday and pulling their pants down on Friday. Folks, we have a mixing of the holy and the profane from the clean, and it's, it's on the platform. And so I believe that God is going to raise up a fresh breed of Samuels in the earth. And He's going to raise up Hannah's intercessors, that travail that's going to come again. I feel like even coming to Lynchburg, God said to me that Lynchburg has become a graveyard for prophets. That there is a spirit of mixture and compromise that has tried to taint the true word of the Lord. And the Spirit of God would come to this city and this region and prophesy to you that I am going to raise up a pure breed of prophets in the earth again. And they will no longer dine at Jezebel's table. For they shall not be bought, yea, they cannot be sold because they have bowed to me in the secret place. I'm telling you, God is exposing the pimping and the prostituting in the house of God. Musicians and singers for hire. Prophets going to the highest bidder. God is coming to cleanse His temple once again. There's going to be a shaking. There's going to be an awakening. If you're awake tonight, say yes. God's dealing with the spirit of Eli. He's writing Ichabod on many churches during the pandemic. God Himself is shutting down many churches during the pandemic. He is nailing Ichabod over their doors because they refuse to confront wickedness and sin in the next generation. So the priests and the leadership, we have a responsibility before the people of God to teach you what is sin and what is not. It's interesting to me, I was preaching at a mega church in Michigan two years ago, over 10,000 people. They asked me to come and preach on revival. 
In the back office, they had five services. The pastor said, Brother Jeremiah, you can do anything. You can say anything this weekend, but just don't say the word sin. The word sin has become offensive in America. And I'm just here to tell you that when you water down the gospel, you strip it of its true power. Jesus is not a salt and pepper shaker that adds flavor to your life. Jesus is the life. He is the truth and He is the way. Jesus is not an item on the buffet where you can have a little bit of Him and a little bit of compromise. If you are not selling out, you can be bought. We have people in the church that are backsliding because they've never front slid. Telling you Jesus is coming to walk among the lampstands. And the way that we've done church prior to the pandemic, we can never go back. This whole business as usual, this whole infatuation with the gifting and charisma of men is leading us down a path of destruction. I want to remind us that in the New Testament, in Titus and Timothy, The qualifications for church leadership have nothing to do with gifting and charisma. They have everything to do with character and integrity. Romans chapter 11 says that the gifts that are given, the grace of God, are without repentance. In other words, if God has given you the gift of prophecy, you can still prophesy accurately and be committing adultery. You could still have the gift, you could still have a miracle working ministry and deceive the entire room that you're right with God. And because there is such a hunger, and a desire in the house of God for more gifting, more charisma. We are creating environments, again, where there is a love for the supernatural and a distaste for the holiness of God. And I'm prophesying to you, God is about to come and shake His church. He's about to come and purify His church. He's about to come and drop a plumb line in the church. There is a standard of morality that you and I I have to give ourselves to. People want to be told, well, just tell me who the fakes are. Just tell me who the frauds are. Here's what the Spirit of God said to me. I will not reveal that to you because I will not rob my church from the gift of discernment. The only way to tell whether someone is right with God or not is look at how they treat their spouse. Quiet in here. Wait a minute. So I'm not infatuated with likes and subscribers and television ministry and more addicted to an algorithm than the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about finding individuals who are winning in the private place. Folks, we have a generation trying to slaughter Goliath in the public place because they've never defeated the lion or the bear in the private place. This is really not radical, it's just good Bible. But we have built, according to the traditions of men and the spirit of religion, there is a spirit of hypocrisy in the church that's put a bad taste in the mouth of the next generation. 
And as a millennial, my heart is yearning and longing for young people to come back into the house of God. For young people to be able to see leaders who are willing to walk with them, who are willing to teach them about healthy marriage and healthy family. We love the gifts. We appreciate the, the grace of God. But we treasure character and integrity more. In Ezekiel 13, he lays out who are the false prophets. So Ezekiel in chapter 44 says the role of the priests and the leaders is to make sure people understand what's sin and what's not sin. Meaning you can't habitually and continually be sleeping with your boyfriend or girlfriend and think you're going to heaven. You're not. Heterosexual, homosexual, bisexual, if it's not in marriage covenant as defined by the Bible, it's an abomination. But see, it's, it's easy to preach the truth when you can't be bought. I didn't come here for money. I didn't come here for applause. I didn't come here for another gig. I came as a messenger of the Lord Jesus Christ who will have to answer to Him. Well, brother, that doesn't make me feel good. Can I help us? We're living in the most overly sensitive I'm offended, brother. Truth is never defined by how it makes me feel. Truth is defined by, is it in the Word of God? But see, we have progressive Christianity who is now attacking the inspiration of the Word of God so that they can define a standard of morality. What's good for you is good for you, and what's good for me is good for me. And however it makes me feel, folks, I'm telling you, as in the days of Josiah, who recovered the Word of God, I'm prophesying to you that God is going to raise up oracles of righteousness. He's going to raise up modern-day preachers like Noah who are going to prophesy to a generation that there is a storm on the horizon and the only way you're going to make it through is to root and ground your life and your marriage and your family on the rock solid truth of Jesus Christ we don't need five steps to a better marriage four steps to a better health life we need the word of God preached in power once again Again. We need to throw away our church growth textbooks and all our mimics and carbon copy church plants and we need to begin to anchor a generation in the truth of... How are we doing? You got your tomatoes ready? Here's the false prophets. Are you ready? It's all in the Bible. False prophets discourage holy and righteous living and encourage the wicked not to repent of their sins. Ezekiel 13, 22. False prophets allow a generation living in sin to feel that they're okay with God. Well, I thought true prophets just come in and read my mail. <laughs> Folks, there is so much pollution in prophetic ministry today. We treat them like psychic readers. We treat them like magicians. Jeremiah 27, 18, if they be true prophets, let them make intercession to the Lord of hosts. In other words, I don't need to know if you're accurate. I need to know if you can pray in the Holy Ghost. I need to know if you can carry the burden of the word of the Lord. I need to know if you can travail and you can fast. That's how we know if you're a true prophet of the Lord. 
telling you this showbiz mentality in the church, this modern day prostitution, this Hophni and Phineas mentality, God, give us real prophets. Give us prophets that love us enough to tell us the truth. Give us real prophets who understand open rebuke is better than hidden love. The Father loves us enough too much to leave us the way that He found us. Come as you are does not mean stay as you are. Well, brother, I was born gay. I'm not going to fight you over it, but you sure weren't born again gay. The gospel. You know, there's a whole lot of preachers shouting and saying nothing. There's a lot of preachers shouting and saying nothing. The gospel is not a gospel of behavior modification. The gospel is a gospel of heart transformation. This is not acting one way on Sunday and acting another way at home. This is about God giving us a new heart and a new mouth and a new mind. This is about God mending broken marriages. This is about God setting fathers in place in their families. I really am. I'm good with it all. I'm good with the shouting and the dancing and the tongue talking and the falling down on the floor. But folks, if you can't take it out the door, stop falling on the floor. This is not Holy Ghost charades. This is not the charismatic zoo. I've done the TV, I've hung with them all. I've I've done the tele, I've literally, I've sat with our Pentecostal charismatic heroes in America and I've grown sick. I I just want to be the same person behind the scenes as I am when you give me a mic. I just want to care enough about people about how they're really doing. How is your marriage? How is your family? Well, what about David and Bathsheba? Listen, the sin in the Bible was never meant to excuse yours. Again, there's this twisted, perverted, polluted mindset where we, we find comfort in our sin. Because the Bible is full of individuals who sinned as well. Let me tell you something. The only person in the Bible who's my example, who I'm mirroring my life after, is the Lord Jesus Christ. Who had all power, who had all authority, but was without sin. He was the spotless Lamb of God who lived a life laid down dependent every single day. And that is what this generation needs. Before Jesus comes for His church, He's coming to His church. And He is dropping the plumb line among prophets. He is dropping the plumb line among the priests and the leaders. Let's begin to deal with the spirit of perversion. 1 Kings chapter 16. I'm going to begin reading in verse 29. Now Ahab the son of Omri became king over Israel in the 38th year of Asa king of Judah. 
And Ahab, the son of Omri, reigned over Israel in Samaria 22 years. And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord more than all who were before him. And it came about as though it had been a trivial thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he married Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbaal, king of the Sidonians, and went to serve Baal and worship him. So he erected an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he built in Samaria. We know that Ahab is an evil dude. It says that he did more evil than all the kings that were before him. But there's this word trivial. I want you to underline it, highlight it, circle it. Very important here. And it came about as though it had been a trivial thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam. This word trivial means it doesn't matter. This word trivial means it's not of a lot of importance. I believe that God tonight, I believe that God globally is going to come after what are we hungry for. I believe that God is after our affections. I believe that appetite dictates the direction of our lives. If you have an appetite for gifting above character, if you have an appetite for television above prayer time, you are going to find yourself among a group of famous ministers in America who are casting out devils, healing the sick, and prophesying. And Jesus is declaring over them, away from me, I never knew you you prophesied to thousands you worked miracles but you were sleeping with the lady on the front row away from me I never knew you you had all the television and all the subscribers and all the church plants and yet you were in bed with mammon you did it for the money There's an appetite and there's a hunger that God wants to deal with tonight. What are you hungry for? Lord, I'm hungry for righteousness. Why? Because the Bible says God is righteous and He loves righteousness. The Bible says the oil of joy was poured out on Jesus. Why? Because He loved righteousness and He hated wickedness and sin. Do you know it's a good thing to hate wickedness and sin? Do you know that it's a problem tonight? That many people in this room served the devil way better than you've ever served God? Man, we have this church. These, we were clubbing. We were getting ready at 10, 11 at night. We would get back at 4, 5 in the morning. So we didn't know who we slept with. We didn't care who we drank with. But brother, church has to be an hour on Sunday or I'm bored. It's called idolatry. How have we settled for such radical form or darkness that now when we've been born again, when we've surrendered our will to Jesus, that we have become domesticated kitty cats in the house of God. We have become domesticated by the spirit of religion when God is releasing a holy jailbreak in the church. He's going to raise up some lions and some lionesses 
is because my Bible says the righteous are as bold as lions. And this little kitty cat religion isn't scaring the devil in America. And God is looking for a people who will run to the altar again. Who will grab the horns and say, Lord, I'm ready to give it all. I'm tired of playing religious games. Is anybody awake tonight? Brother, my, my, my attention span, I can't. Can we hurry up and get out of here? Brother, you're playing Fortnite eight hours a day. And you're, you're 40 and you're like a 12-year-old boy. We need to get you a job. We need to get you in the house of God. We need to have you growing up. And when you ask people their testimony, I mean, man, they're like glorifying the devil. 15, 20 years of, I mean, wild stuff. But you sit by them in church and they're like a statue. Some of these men, they love sports. They love entertainment. I mean, they're excited. They invest their resources and the offering plate passes them every Sunday. just believe God is going to raise up a radically righteous generation who is going to live to make the devil pay. Who's a I'm going to make him pay for all the wasted years. Look at your neighbor and say there's more. Oh, there's so much more. Oh man, we, we, we would, why are we more familiar with hell on earth than heaven on earth? Why, why have we settled for years and years serving the devil as our master, doing his bidding? Testing the boundaries. Romans 1 says that they invented ways of doing evil. We were wild ones for the devil. And then we get saved and domesticated like little kitty cats. And our purr is doing nothing. See, I love you too much tonight to leave you in compromise. I love you too much tonight to leave you with mixture in your life. I love you too much to leave you straddling the fence of a move of God and a move of the world. God is saying, come out from among them. Take a step toward the fire of God. And I'm just not going to breathe fire that makes you feel good. I'm talking about a cleansing, purifying fire. A heart transformation that will never leave you the same again. So Ahab looks at sin as a trivial matter. His first mistake is that he says sin is not a big deal. I want to tell you, treating sin casually creates casualties. Treating sin casually creates casualties. You're not just watching pornography. You are fellowshipping with demons. <clears throat> not a big deal. Not a big deal. I'd just rather pet it. I'd just rather suppress it because we're going to church, honey, put on the tie, put on the suit, put on the dress. We're just, we're going to cut, we're going to use ministry to cover up dysfunction. We're going to do a little shit about a Hyundai and I can't keep my tongue in my mouth on the weekends. 
I'm just going to wow everybody with my gift and my ability to play guitar and, and play on a piano and prophesy. I'm just going to fool everybody but God. God, this is the first night, not the last night. <laughs> Folks. I want to invite you to go hard on sin. I, I, want, I, I want to almost demand that we get aggressive on compromise and mixture. How, how does the devil begin in Genesis as a snake and he winds up as a dragon in Revelation? We fed him. See, it's, it's that little fox. It's that little text. It's that little phone call. It's that little flirt at work. It's that little seed that you allow. It's not a big deal. It's just one look. It's just one invitation. It's just, it'll be okay. And I'm telling you, there is a false grace spirit moving in the church today that is literally allowing people to be comfortable in their sin. Sin isn't a big deal. You know why sin is a big deal? Because it costs God His one and only Son. creates casualties how many people look we're all looking for some little red devil right with horns saying come here come here come here we're like oh yeah 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 that's the devil the devil comes as an angel masquerading as light god is tr the devil is tricking and trapping a generation with good things when God is asking you, will you hold out for the God thing? See, don't forget that God blessed Ishmael. All right, listen. But God will bless many things that he will never inhabit. His presence is here, but is His glory here? You've got the anointing, but do you have the glory of God? See, I feel during this week of consecration, God is speaking to many of us about settling for way less than what God is inviting us into. I feel like the Lord is releasing grace to literally make war on sin. Get aggressive with it. How many of you men or grandparents would just let a grown man come in and take advantage of your children? I don't think so. You know that bear that we all try to act like isn't alive? There's no junior Holy Ghost. You know why I know that? Because there's no junior devil. The devil has invaded the education system in America. We are calling good evil and evil good. There's a twisting and a perverting over. I've got four children under 10. I'm carrying this crazy burden for the next generation. God, raise up a standard of righteousness in the land. God, protect them from the evil one. But it's, it's not the Sunday school teacher's job to disciple our children. It's, it's not the teacher's job to teach them right from wrong. It's mom and dad in the home. 
But hear me, it's, it's hard to drop the plumb line on your kids when you're not living it. Satan has neutered the church. There is so much sin and compromise that we have a hard time talking about it because we're in bed with it. You have no authority over something you're in bed with. We can't... Sexual immorality. How about racism? We can't get the victory in America because our churches are full of racist people. Great awakenings in society always begin with great awakenings in the church. Whatever you're believing God to do out there must come in here first. This is why Peter says judgment comes first in the house of God. Before Jesus comes for his church, he's coming to his church. Let let me get through this. So Ahab makes a mistake and he begins to treat sin as a trivial matter. It's not a big deal. It's just a little of this and it's just a little of that. It's just that little open door, that's how it begins. But I want you to notice here, he treats sin as a, uh, a trivial thing that he married Jezebel. When sin becomes a trivial matter in our lives... It opens up the gateway for unrighteous affections. Tonight is about what are you hungry for. Tonight is about our spiritual appetite. When he begins to treat sin as not a big deal, it produces unrighteous affections, follow me, And Ahab becomes attracted to something he was meant to be disgusted by. I'm going to tell you that when sin becomes not a big deal, it opens up the gates of perversion. Where there begins a twisting and a polluting and a perverting of affections... And that man should have ran from Jezebel, but all of a sudden, because sin wasn't a big deal, it opens up the door, and here comes Jezebel. How many people do you know married the wrong person, chased the wrong thing? See, that's the danger of of allowing What you watch on the computer define what it means to be pretty. Help us, Lord. Sin's not a big deal. The next thing that happens is his unrighteous affections begin to attract him to someone that he was never meant to be attracted to. It led to fatal attraction. There's just a little door that we downplayed. There's just a little Snapchat. There's just a little inbox. There's just a little of this and a little of that. Not a big deal. And all of a sudden what happens is the snake becomes a dragon. We become attracted and hungry for things that we were never intended to become hungry for. It leads to fatal attraction. Verse 34, in his days, Hiel the Bethelite built Jericho. He laid its foundation with the loss of Abraham, his firstborn, 
and set up its gates with the loss of his youngest son, Segub, according to the word of the Lord which he spoke by Joshua, the son of Nun. It gets worse. Joshua gave a prophecy years before this that the man that would rebuild this city, it would cost him his firstborn and his youngest. So Ahab is so trapped in a spirit of perversion and unrighteous affections that he begins to build something that would cost him his own sons and daughters. What kind of individual would do something that would cost them their children? A perverted man or woman. Let me run this by you. One generation's compromise becomes the next generation's captivity. <laughs> Sir, this is not just about your computer problem. This is about the demons that you are inviting into your home that are going to prey on your children. Your compromise as a man is going to lead to your children's captivity. So when you talk about the enticement of sin, when you talk about the allurement and should I do it and should I not and who's going to know about it and who's not going to know about it. It's like they walk in the office, you're married, and she comes in and says, come sleep with me. And the only right thing to do is say, hold on, pull out your wallet. Before we do this, let me just pull out the pictures of my wife and kids and light them on fire before we go ahead. Because my choice today is going to affect those who come behind me tomorrow. And our aggressiveness and our hatred for sin should come from our knowledge that Satan is not just coming for you. He's coming for your children and your grandchildren. And I've got good news for you tonight. God is going to raise up men and women of covenant. It was Job who rose up and said, I have chosen to make a covenant with my eyes. I'm going to tell you one man of covenant has the power to reverse the curse in the bloodline. I've come here tonight to prophesy to you that generational curses are coming off your marriage and your family tonight. I'm here to prophesy to you it's time to get radical against darkness. It's time to come out of the shallows and the shadows of Christianity. And it's time to hear the deep things of God calling out to the deep things of you. It's time to grow up and recognize my choices in my marriage and my family are affecting others. Remember that Nike t-shirt that came out? Not a role model. You know the problem with that is, is everyone's a role model whether you want to be one or not. Someone's always watching. Someone's always observing. You can be up here preaching, but your wife knows you're a liar. Yeah, we need his help. I want you to close your eyes all over this place.
Holy Spirit, we need your help tonight. God, I ask that you would restore the fear of the Lord to the church once again. Lord, there's no fear of you in, the, in your house anymore. We've become too familiar with your presence that we don't even know you've left. I feel like the Lord is speaking to me right now about Samson. About some of you have been playing with Delilah too long. You're allowing sin to massage you and stroke you. It's stealing the strength of the zeal of the Lord in your life. It's time to renounce all sin. It's time to repent and make a way for great refreshing to come this week. I believe the Lord could have sent me at any night this week, but He loves this church enough to start out with a deep, deep call to consecration and repentance. Lord, let every stone be overturned. God, raise up men and women of covenant that will reverse the curse in their family. Shonda Rabakaya Robo Shiki Yara Matara Bashiki Yara Bashoko Yara Matari Yara Mama Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. God, I ask that you would take us back to our first love tonight. Where are my pure ones? Where are those like Daniel? Where are my Radshak, Meshach, and Abednego's who will refuse to bow? God, I ask that you would raise them up in Lynchburg. Here come the consecrated ones. If you feel the burden of God, if you feel the hand of the Lord upon you right now, I want to ask you to come down to the front quickly. Doesn't matter if I came for one person. Shandarabakayo Roboshia Rabakaya Mondarabasha Tarabakayo Roboshia Rababa. Fire. God, let fire fall on your altar tonight. Taking some of you back to your roots. I hear the voice of God saying, I'm calling many in this room back to messages and men that you used to listen to as young people.
What are you hungry for? Begin to pray. Begin to open up your mouth. Lord, I'm asking that you would release righteous affections. I pray for God appetite. I command every demonic influence to be dispelled from your life right now. I bind the spirit of pornography in Jesus' name. Every sexual perversion demon, go right now in Jesus' name. I command a cleansing in your house right now. Come on, pray, pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It's time to get your fight back. Fire. Fire. It's time to get on the wall. Where are the watchmen? Where are the watchwomen? There's a call to the wall tonight. There's power in the blood. There's power in the blood of Jesus. I break the spirit of shame in this place right now in Jesus' name. I declare freedom over your life in the name of Jesus. Come on, I want to empower you. Just contend a little bit longer. We've got to pray until we can pray. We've got to shake compromise off. Mixture go in Jesus' name. More Lord. More Lord. Drive out hypocrisy in the church. More, Lord. More, Lord. We're coming back to the heart of worship. Come on, push that sin out of the way. Push that compromise and mixture out of the way. Come on, it's time to break up some fallow ground tonight. Come on, I hear God saying, I'm bringing holiness back. The world might be bringing sexy back, but God is bringing holiness back. calling forth prophets is calling forth consecrated messengers I break the fear of man in this place I believe God is ready to send some of you to the nations, but it's time to bow. I don't know who you are. You've got a watch and a 
a time. I see a, a fathering mantle on you. And I see sons that the Lord is going to gift you that have mixture and compromise in their life. And I see you disciple training and disciple making, working out character flaws in their life and preparing them, not just for the race, but for the marathon. I just prophesy to you, you've been given a marathon ministry. Not shooting stars, but shining stars. Not only called you to run, but you're going to run a marathon. You're going to last and remain a long, long time. I'm telling you, there's a glory. There's a glory that God wants to send to churches and individuals. But if there's a crack in your character, what was intended to bless you will crush you. If you don't begin to deal with the skeletons in the closet, the very spotlight you crave will be the very spotlight that exposes you. let every curse be broken God I'm asking that you would resurrect fathers in this room I'm resurrecting a fathering mantle in this room says that I have anointed you to tread on the head of the serpent. There's an anointing on you to break the power of religion. occupying a position in the spirit that many want the Lord says I've not chosen you because of your gifting I've set you apart because of your humility and many around you are looking to soar but I put a heart in you to get low see a realm of warfare in the second heavens attempting to entice you into the warfare and the Lord says if you will bow low before me I'll allow that warfare just to pass you over I free you from the opinions of your family and we just break off I see white witchcraft all over you Lord says the witchcraft comes off by the tears. It's the tears. It's the priesting before the Lord that will set you free. There's going to be humility that you're going to walk in even in your marriage, even as a father. Lord's given you, He's gifted you a sharp arrow to keep you humble. Don't despise the arrow. Embrace it. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, come on, let's just be open.
the primary way God's going to sanctify you is through your marriage and your kids. primary way God will sanctify you is through your spouse and your children. Yes, Lord. God dealing with a hunger for influence. A hunger to be seen. I hear the Spirit of God saying to someone, if you don't bow low, I will bring you low. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. I see God mantling this church with a strong backbone. May, may have felt like things you were taking a step back, but I feel like I see a picture of a rubber band. And I feel like the Lord says, get ready, ramp church, because in 2022, there's going to be a catapult. It's going to be a thrusting forward, but right now in the backing up and in the, in the humbling, I'm giving you a backbone. I'm laying into your foundation so that when I call you to run in the coming season, you won't lose your breath. It's a real attack on this house in the spirit to cause you to fall short and not reach out. For the Lord would even say over this house, and even Bishop Younger, there are many things that will come that are within your reach. But there are things even beyond your reach if you'll contend for, and if you'll ask me for, I'll allow you to grab hold of them. Don't just settle for the blessing of what's near you. Stretch out for what's beyond you. I'm preparing a people. I'm preparing a people for what's to come. glow here. You're not just called to sing. I see the Lord giving you messages from the throne room. Prophetic rebukes to the church. hear the Lord say they love how high you can take them but in the days ahead they'll despise how low you'll bring them there's going to be some high highs and some low lows there's going to be some high high praise and then there's going to be some deep deep repentance Lord says, follow the ebb of the Spirit. It's going to be a flow. It's going to be some meetings, high, high, high. Other meetings, low, low, low. And I just call forth the mothering mantle on you. This is not just give you your song. You're going to teach others how to sing. And it's the song of the Lord. You've been around so many gifted individuals that can hit every chord and every chorus. But do they have the anointing of the Holy Ghost? Just release the gift of faith. You need faith to accomplish the will of God. 
I release finances to you right now in Jesus' name. You need to make your dream known. You need to put your dream out there. Give God an opportunity through others to fund it. Sir, would you come right here? Lord has called you, brother. He's marked you from your mother's womb. Lord, I just release radical fire. Oh, there's, there's a radical fire that God wants to mantle you with. You have a mantle to make the devil pay. to speak to your identity you are a son of God you are a son of God I just command every demonic lie every serpentine stranglehold I command you to come off of them right now in Jesus name Satan you can't have them you cannot have this one we call you into your destiny ha looking to rub shoulders with famous people and Jesus says I'm the most famous one no I'm serious God is dealing with appetites tonight that would rather rub shoulders with famous people in a back room than spend time with God God, I ask that you would deal with those unrighteous appetites. I promise you, you won't like what you see anyways. of God and every harassing bullying spirit I release a spirit of acceleration upon you that you are not far gone you have not lost the anointing to give you back your ministry no you didn't hear me I'm gonna raise you up as a trophy of my grace (laughs) and you will deliver a knockout blow to the enemy you will restore hope and the God of the second chance to my people Is this okay? The Lord says that I have marked you for a youth revival. There's a revivalist anointing upon you. I've called you to go into the high schools and set them on fire. 
There's an anointing for college campuses. I hear 18 to 35. Lord, I ask that you would release a prophetic evangelist anointing. And I command religious legalistic spirits from family members to be lifted off your bloodline. Every Freemason spirit, in Jesus' name, loose him. You're a bloodline breaker. You're a deliverer. You will cast out devils. You will win the heart of the next generation. The Holy Spirit's ministry is for today. Shonda roboko ya rabaka ya ramasoto roboko ya raba. Favor, favor, favor. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon you. He's anointed you to preach the good news, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, setting you free tonight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just say yes. There's some gifts that are coming. There's some gifts that are coming. You've been praying some prayers, believing God for some things. In the name of Jesus, we just command what's locked up right now would be unlocked and given to Him right now. I just command depression to leave your mind right now in Jesus name God has not given you a spirit of fear but love power in a sound mind I break off every suicidal thought off of your bloodline right now in Jesus name the joy of the Lord shall be your strength for you will come up out of this wilderness leaning upon your beloved you will see the goodness of God in the land of the living you will make it through this time like a sponge that you have soaked up for many years and you have seen many things God has allowed you to be exposed not so that you could walk away but so that you could run toward the battle line in this generation and I just speak strength to your inner man that this generation needs you. There's been some kind of plot twist in your life, something unexpected, something that caught you off guard.
And the devil's trying to use that plot twist to take you out. And I just prophesy life into your bones. I just command all insomnia, every attack in the night season, all nightmares. I command the spirit of the accuser to come off of you right now in Jesus' name. You don't have to blame yourself any longer. It's not your fault. You're going to wield a sharp sword in the days ahead. You're going to fight for women who don't have a voice. And I just free you from demonic intimidation and religious men that want to shut you up. There's some that fear if you speak, you'll expose. love you Jesus just tell him you love him we love you Lord we surrender tonight we declare that you're just getting started this week that you've come for the root tonight Lord here it is here it is Lord just give him the root give him the appetite Give them the compromise, whatever the mixture is. Lord, here you go. Come on, just 30 more seconds. Come on, His glory is here. His glory's here. He can deal with it right now. Just give him the root. Quit playing games. Quit faking it. Just give him the root right now. Give him the marriage. Give him the prodigal. Come on, I feel another wave of glory here. I know it's getting late. He's a cloud by day, but a pillar of fire by night. Come and burn up that chaff, Lord. Come with that winnowing fork. dealing with church hurt tonight I speak to every person in this room who is wounded 
by a man or woman of God who fell, who stumbled on their journey, and it caused you to draw back, caused you to criticize, it caused you to grow cynical. God, I ask that you would heal. How many of those, those, that's you? You've been impacted in some way by a man or woman of God that fell. Just raise them high, God. Lord, I ask that you would remove the spirit of offense right now. Come on, that's a demonic spirit that's trying to steal you, your race. Lord, we shift our gaze back on Jesus, the author, the perfecter of our faith. Help us to trust again. On the count of three, I want us to give Jesus the biggest shout and round of applause we can give him for the work that's just begun tonight. Are you ready? On the count of three, let's shout and give Jesus a clap offering. One, two, three, go. Hey, it's Jeremiah Johnson. I want to thank you so much for joining us at the Altar Global, a growing movement of Christians who have a burden, a desire for the return of Jesus Christ and the preparation of the bride for that glorious day. I want to pray for you today. I know that you have needs, desires, things in your life that you're hoping, believing that God would answer. But before we do that, I want to just extend an opportunity to you to partner with the Altar Global in your prayers, your financial support. God is gathering a remnant of folks who just have a desire to partner with us on a monthly basis, or maybe you're even watching today and you just want to sow a one-time seed. I want to let you know as the founder of this movement, we're going to take the money, the prayers that you sow today and sow them right back into the kingdom of God. We're seeing souls saved, the church come alive like never before, missionaries, church planners being revived because of what God is doing. You're gonna see a number pop on your screen. You can text to give. You can even click on the link in the comment section and there'll be an opportunity for you to give there. So let's pray today. Father, thank you for those watching today. Lord, thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit that is participating even with the bride saying, come Lord Jesus. Lord, I ask that you would meet every need today. Lord, I pray for breakthrough. I pray for salvation for lost loved ones. God, we believe that we are living in the greatest days that we have ever known. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Stay tuned for another episode. Bye-bye.